Hey there designers, what is up? I am in a city called Gdania in Poland for a conference called Product Camp. Awesome conference, I've been here for two days now. Today I'm actually giving a talk about how I use Webflow to prototype and actually build the front end of product. So I thought my talk is in about an hour. I thought I'm gonna run through the presentation together with you, share with you what I'm gonna talk about. It will actually help me practice for my talk and then we'll head out and give the talk. So let me run through the presentation with you. Um, the presentation is called How to Speed Up Your Product Development by Empowering Designers to Build. Oh man, I actually needed to come up with a better name for this talk. It's a little bit too long. But um, anyway, the, the premise here is that you can make the, the process of product development happen 10x faster if you actually allow the designers to build the UI um, in Webflow. And I'll show how I'm doing that. So basically, I'll cover a little bit about myself and, and talk about the fact that I was an in-house product designer in a startup called Anydo. Then I found it out um, and I was managing the product in Prospero, which is, I have oversaw the, the whole process of product development. And then I spent a lot of years doing product design as a freelancer. So just to give a little bit of context of the experience that I have when it comes to product design. And so I wanna share a little bit about how I used to do prototyping. So when I just started, around seven or, or eight years ago, there was actually nothing like Envision or something like that to prototype. So I actually had to use Flash, which, you know, it sounds funny because Flash is not a prototyping tool, but it was an animation tool, which actually allowed pretty complicated animations because you could literally do whatever you want to do and you can make things clickable and then you could create even logic inside of it. So it wasn't really efficient, but it was pretty powerful to do, um, to do prototyping with. Then um, a few years later, Envision came out and it really simplified and made the process much faster, but also it kind of limited the uh, amount of interactions and stuff that you could do because it was very simple. You click here, you move to another page, you couldn't really create micro interactions and, and complicated animations, stuff like that. Then in later years, you know, Principle came out and now we even have tools like Framer, which allows you to create more complicated stuff. But still, when it comes down to real, micro interaction and responsiveness, especially for, you know, web, web UI, still I find to, uh, that I need to struggle a lot when I'm, as a designer, trying to create some interface and then communicate to the development team what needs to happen, how this needs to behave. And I'll show you in a second a few of the things that I'm trying to communicate with uh, the, the developers. And it's hard. So for many years when I was doing this, the struggle was real in terms of, you know, <laughs> you building out a design, you, you move it to the development, they show you a lot of things are not happening as you envision them. You try to push them to make things look nicer, more refined, you know, in terms of layout, in terms of interactions, and they, you know, push back because it's hard and it's frustrating for both sides. So that was basically my life. And then, you know, when I started working on Prospero, because it was my own product and I used to do everything from the marketing to the product design, I actually started using Webflow for the marketing, you know, landing pages, which is basically what Webflow is for. It's for designing websites. But then I was like, how about I try and use it to actually develop the UI? So in this case, it, like the interface that you see here, including all the hover interaction and basically all the interaction that you could see in Prospero, all of them were actually created um, in Webflow. And our process was basically that, you know, I've designed the page and all the interactions in Webflow. Then I would export the code and uh, my development partner would kind of wrap it in React, React and connect it to the database. And that was basically our, our process, which was so much faster than what we had before when he literally did everything, you know, just taking a static, you know, sketch file or something like that and trying to build everything himself. So he already had all the CSS of the layout ready. He already had all the interactions ready and that made the process so much faster. So again, I'll, I'll give a little bit of context for people who don't know what Webflow is. So again, it is a platform that was designed, I would say for building websites, but it's actually a UI for code. So you have the, the pan that you see here on the right, it's basically just manipulating CSS properties visually. So you don't have to write the code, but you literally, what you're doing is you're coding and that gives you the ability to basically do whatever you want to do. So 
I wanted to demonstrate how I use this for Prospero, but it, since we sold the company, I don't have access to the files anymore. So I was saying to myself, hey, let me demonstrate this on Dropbox. So I took a look at the UI of Dropbox for the web and I said, let me try and rebuild everything that goes on here, all the interaction and responsiveness in Webflow and see how that turns out. So here's a time lapse of me doing this. And I, it basically took me something like an hour and a half to build out all the interface, including, again, the responsiveness, including, I actually didn't do the mobile version of it, but um, but I did all the interaction, all the hover states, and, and you'll be able to see that in a minute. But actually building out all the code, so it's not just a prototype, it's not just something, you know, that you can show other people, it's literally functional to do that in an hour and a half. I think that's, that's pretty crazy. All right, so basically this is you know, the, the whole interface build out in Webflow. And you can, obviously you can export the code here, the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and you can even publish it. So I've published it here. And you can see that this is, this is a real interface, like it's scrollable, it's responsive in the terms of, you know, you can see that the right side and the left side are kind of fixed and the, the content area here is responsive, the number of images shown here is based on how wide your your screen is those are things that you couldn't do when you're using kind of like a static prototyping tool and even when i'm scrolling i have this kind of like sticky navigation here sticky kind of like titles for the sections another thing that would be super super hard for you to kind of prototype and even this here so you have this hover interaction when you're hovering over an item you get these kind of options for um for this menu and because this is class based so each one of these items here you know uh, for example these called recent items wrapper they have the same the same class the same styles here so if i make a change to this one it would change everything that goes on in all of them so it's kind of like maybe you could say kind of like a symbol and i can create all the interactions such as you know i click a button here it opens up a menu or you know i want to hide this so i create an, an animation that when i click here this animates and actually disappears so this is really really close to the final ui of course you probably want to you know use something like react or something when you're actually developing a web app but once you have all this code and it's really good production ready code it makes first of all prototyping user testing much more reliable and and looks like the end result and when you're going to production you know you're able to actually take the code and use it instead of rewriting everything and this was done by the designer so it looks and interacts exactly like the designer envisioned it to be that makes the process so much easier. So I think the, cl the clothing thoughts are why I think this is great. I think when designers are doing this and they actually understand the core concepts of HTML and CSS, they really know how to design better products because they understand how they want them to react and, and interact with each other. And they can actually implement all the interaction, hover states and, and you know micro interaction or animation that they want themselves saves up a lot of time. You export the code and from my experience, de uh, developers love this because it saves them a bunch of time. All right, I think I think this is pretty solid. I'll see, obviously in the, in the real talk, I'll explain, expand a little bit more. I run through it pretty quickly right now, but um, I'm feeling comfortable, so. Let's pack up this room and head to the conference. All right, so the talk is over and I'm now at the airport. I think I had a little mistake with naming the, the talk. You saw it in my presentation. The name was way too long. I think it was confusing. You know, it was a a product conference where there were designers, engineer, product managers, and it wasn't really clear who this talk is for. So it's really important reminder about, you know, what's in the title is super important because if people don't know that it's for them, that they're not going to keep reading or show up. Um, but enough people showed up. There was good interaction at the end. You know, people asked some questions. So hopefully um, this was very valuable for them. And, you know, always fun to meet people who are watching the YouTube channel and interacting with, with other designers. That's always very fun. So 
overall awesome conference. I'm now at the airport flying over to Warsaw, uh, going to Element Talks conference where I'll be speaking as well on a different topic. Um, so yeah, fun times. The Poland tour continues. I'll see you on the next video.